Hi everyone, it's John Mitchell and welcome to the last video of Area Study 1. We're going to look at Porter's generic strategies. So this is the last point in the study design for Area of Study 1. And this is a theory, so Porter's theory, you might see it as. Uh, it is going to be challenging to summarise 500 pages of Porter's book uh, into a few minutes. So this may be, this video may be a little bit longer than previous videos. So Porter found that businesses are able to gain a competitive advantage by focusing on what he calls generic strategies. And the two generic strategies that are listed in our study design are the lower cost strategy and differentiation. Now with the lower cost strategy, you may also see it as cost advantage or cost leadership because that's what Porter called them. But I'm going to call it in this video the lower cost strategy because that's what our study design calls the particular strategy. So before we get into those two generic strategies, and we will get into them, but before we do and go into them in depth, what I want you, what we're going to look at first of all, are the, what's known as the five competitive forces. So before a business or managers decide which of the two generic strategies they're going to use or implement, they need to look at the five competitive forces. And so the, what these forces are, they are competitive forces that make up the particular industry that a business is operating in. And so Porter states that businesses should firstly understand the competitive forces that make up their industry. And he goes through five types of competitive forces and they are supplier power, so how easy it is for suppliers to drive the costs up. If there's obviously less supplies, so there's only one or two supplies, they have more power within the industry to drive up costs. Buyer power is the second competitive force, so how powerful the buyers or the customers are in driving the price down. Third one is competitive, competitive rivalry, which looks at the number of competitors, but also the capability of competitors. So how powerful or how strong are other competitors within the particular industry? The threat of substitution. So if we look at substituting goods or services, how easy is it for customers to find a similar good or service than what a business is actually producing and selling to their customers? Obviously, the easier it is for the customers, then the more difficult it is to drive or to charge a higher price for that particular product or service and the threat of new, new entry. So how easy is it for new competitors to enter the market? If it's you know, sometimes cost or um, getting legalities and things like that can be really difficult to enter a new market, but sometimes those that can be really easy. So businesses should understand all of these competitive forces that make up their particular industry. Once they have done that and analyzed that, they should be doing a SWOT analysis to look at what they're really good at within their particular business. And once they've looked at where they sit and where the industry it lies, they can then decide which generic strategy they should implement. So let's go into the two generic strategies that are listed in our study design. So first of all, the lower cost strategy. Remember, you may see this as the cost advantage or cost leadership strategy, but it's where a business is able to gain a competitive advantage by becoming a low cost producer in its industry. Now, businesses can achieve that in a number of different ways, and I've just got three examples here, but by operating on a large scale and producing in large quantities, so they're able to achieve economies of scale, implementing technology or what Porter calls proprietary technology and also preferential access to raw materials. So where they're able to access materials that either they have priority over in terms of cost or they are the only ones that can access them compared to uh, other businesses or their competitors. Now for businesses to implement the lower cost strategy, that means that they are able to lower their costs of producing a particular good or service lower than their competitors and that's how they gain a competitive advantage. But I don't want you to think about uh, the lower cost strategy as necessarily being, well, we're the low cost producer, therefore we are the lower pr lowest price seller. That doesn't necessarily mean the case. If they are able to lower their costs, they, then absolutely they are able to lower their prices. However, Porter states that the business can gain a competitive advantage if it is able to become a cost leader, so a really low cost producer, but charge a price that is near the industry average. So if they are able to do that, then that's where they'll gain a competitive advantage. So reducing costs then, if they ha are still going to charge a price that's near the industry average, reducing costs can't have a significant impact on the value to the customer. So although they're reducing costs and becoming a cost leader, they need to look at ha the impact it is having on the overall quality of the product and the value they are giving to their consumers. So business can find cost savings in what Porter calls the value chain. Now the value chain is a set of activities a business performs to add value to a good or service. So every time, every activity that involves the product, the good or service, 
that adds value to the particular product. And so what each activity comes at a cost. There are costs associated with each activity. So businesses need to assess each activity in the value chain to see where costs can be reduced. And when they do that, then they are able to reduce their costs and become a cost leader. So just to recap on this generic strategy, a business is able to gain a competitive advantage if it's able to become a cost leader, so become the low cost producer or reduce their costs and charge a price that is near its industry average and in order to do that they obviously can't have a significant impact on the value. Even though they are reducing costs, they can't impact significantly on the value that they are offering to consumers. Now the differentiation strategy is the second generic strategy that we need to look at and the differentiation strategy is where the business aims to be unique in its industry in some way that is valued by its customers. Now as a reward for being unique that allows the business to charge a premium price for the product that they are selling. Now differentiation can be achieved in a number of ways. So what they're trying to do is really stand out from the crowd, from their competitors, and offer something to consumers that no one else has. And there's a number of ways that they can do that. First of all, it could be that they have high quality materials or unique materials that other businesses don't have access to or that aren't, they aren't using in their particular uh, good or service. It could be a patent, so something unique that no other business can make Marketing, unique marketing experience. So Red Bull is famous for this and using these really unique marketing tools that enable it to charge a premium price for their product. Relationships, so having those really strong relationships that again help the business stand out. So we're not just talking about the product here essentially, we're talking about all the different activities within a business where that can cause differentiation. So I've got the example there of LeBron James and Nike. That's a unique relationship that Nike has that enables them to charge a premium price because they have a unique relationship with LeBron James. Innovations, so something that is again unique to the business, they are able to differentiate themselves through the innovations that they create and the Tesla self-driving technology is one of those examples. Training, so having unique training where the employees then become the real uniqueness of the business and they are able to be more skilled or have more knowledge than their competitors. And also the final one that we'll go through is distribution. So being able to be unique in the distribution and offer something that other businesses are unable to offer and Amazon has been, in a especially in America and now is coming to Australia has become a really powerful force in the distribution that they are able to offer their Prime Now customers one hour delivery in, in certain uh, areas of the country. Now Porter states that businesses should select one strategy rather than risk being mediocre at both so they don't want to be implement the differentiation strategy and be unique but also be the low cost producer and, and uh, implement the strategy of cost leadership. He calls that being stuck in the middle where they really risk being mediocre at both. It's important that businesses implement one so that they can focus and be really um, really good at one of those particular generic strategies. However, each strategy cannot completely ignore the other. So as we've spoken about throughout this, if it's cost leadership that they're going on, they still can't ignore differentiation because they can't harm the value significantly to the consumer. And the same deal with differentiation. If a business is going to use a differentiation strategy, they can't be so unique that it's going to blow the costs of the business out so far that it doesn't that it makes the business or the product unprofitable. So it's important that the businesses, although they choose one strategy, they are still aware of the impact they will have on each strategy so they can't ignore each other. So just to recap, Porter's theory looks at how businesses can gain a competitive advantage and they can do that through implementing generic strategies and the two generic strategies we looked at were the lower cost strategy and differentiation. Just a reminder that in your textbooks you'll probably see the lower cost strategy as cost advantage or cost leadership. Uh, I just wanted to call it the lower cost strategy today because that's what our study design calls it. Now to decide which strategy to implement, businesses should look at the five competitive industry forces and we went through each of those, the supplier power, buying power, competitive rivalry, threat of substitution and threat of entry and by analysing those five competitive industry forces and the business actually looking at what their, where their strengths are, they can make a decision about which strategy to implement, whether it be the lower cost strategy or the differentiation strategy. But again, if a business looks to implement both strategies, they risk being stuck in the middle and being mediocre at both. So it's better for them to choose one particular strategy. So for questions, activities and more, then come on over to teachingbubble.com.